You know, somebody the other day said to me, this is as bad as Watergate. Well, nobody died in Watergate. But this is a ma either a massive cover-up cover up or an incompetence that is not acceptable service to the American people. I'm Janet Porter. Beyond incompetence and a massive cover-up, could Benghazi have more to do with President Obama's ideology? Well, I have known Islam on three continents before coming to the region where it was first revealed. That experience guides my conviction. That explains why President Obama met with the Muslim Brotherhood in the White House, the group that wants to undermine America and destroy Israel, and also gave them $1.5 billion of our tax money. That's the Muslim Brotherhood that persecutes Christians and political opponents with crucifixion that just got a billion and a half of our tax dollars, while our ambassador was denied critical security and help despite multiple requests. So State Department was telling the folks on the ground in Libya, don't continue to ask for this help? Correct. Wood says, in his opinion, some of the security teams would have been in Benghazi on September 11th to help the State Department bodyguards if they'd been allowed to remain in Libya. While both the president and vice president denied any knowledge of what was happening, multiple emails were sent to the White House beginning at 4.05, the same day as the attack. At 4.05 p.m. Eastern Time on September 11, an alert from the State Department Operations Center was issued to a number of government and intelligence agencies. Included were the White House Situation Room, the Office of the Director of National Intelligence, and the FBI. U.S. diplomatic mission in Benghazi under attack. Approximately 20 armed people fired shots. Explosions have been heard as well. Were they denied requests for help during the attack? Well, we are, we are finding out exactly what happened. I can tell you, as I've said uh, over the last uh, uh, couple of months since this happened, that the minute I found out, found out what was going on, I gave three very clear directives. Number one, make sure that we are securing our personnel and doing whatever we need to. Oh, by the way, he said that he immediately uh, ordered action to be taken. Well, no action was taken over seven hours. Now we find out the Secretary of Defense decided not to take any action. Seven hours, the cowards in the White House were watching something they knew that was going to potentially kill those 30 people and potentially kill my son. And they refused to do that even though they had a moral duty to send support. They chose not. I think uh, this may be further proof of the ideology explanation that there's this screen over consciousness that prevents them from seeing reality when it's put right in front of them. Islam is not part of the problem in combating violent extremism. It is an important part of promoting peace. And those helpful Libyans who dragged our ambassador through the streets were later thanked by the president for their thoughtfulness in taking him to the hospital. Libyans helped some of our diplomats find safety, and they carried Ambassador Stevens' body to the hospital where we tragically learned that he had died. Despite the fact that Gallup reveals that more than three-quarters of Americans describe themselves as Christians and less than one percent Muslims, that's not the America that President Obama sees. We are no longer a Christian nation. We do not consider ourselves a Christian nation. The United States has been enriched by Muslim Americans. Since our founding, American Muslims have enriched the United States. Islam has always been a part of America's story. There is a mosque in every state in our union, and over 1,200 mosques within our borders. You know, one of the points I want to make is, is that if you actually took the number of Muslims, Americans, uh, you know, we'd be one of the largest Muslim countries in the world. And how does the president view this devastating loss of life? Four Americans get killed, it's not optimal. Not on, not on, not on. At least the president offered his warm condolences to Charles Woods over the loss of his son. Woods is a powerful voice. It was more of just a whining little voice. I'm sorry. You know, and I could tell by his voice he wasn't even sorry. It would be like a little kid that's told by the teacher to go apologize to Johnny out on the playground. And when he looked at me, his face was pointed towards me, but he couldn't look me in the eye. He was looking over my shoulder. And like I say, I thought he, you know, uh, political, right? he was like, literally like shaking hands with a dead fish. 
yeah. and I did not believe him at all as, as far as his being sorry. And now we understand why. Was he one of those cowards that was in the White House watching my son being murdered on TV and refusing to do anything? What could possibly be more important than protecting American lives? And I consider it part of my responsibility as President of the United States to fight against negative stereotypes of Islam wherever they appear. Interestingly, the King of Saudi Arabia has called for UN action against anyone who dare speak out against Islam. Wait a minute, isn't that the same guy that President Obama bowed to? But I believe the ideology uh, explanation is the most powerful. That is what we saw play out in the last two weeks. It was a crude and disgusting video sparked outrage throughout the Muslim world. Sparked by this uh, hateful video. Over an awful internet video that we had nothing to do with. Protests that uh, arose because of the outrage over the video. This video is disgusting. Disgusting and reprehensible. This is in response to a video that is offensive. You don't really believe that. Of course, absolutely I believe that because in fact it's the case. And what were the comforting words offered by the Secretary of State? to the father of American hero, Tyrone Woods. But then she said, we will make sure that the person who made that film is arrested and prosecuted. Which is precisely what they did to an American citizen who still remains in jail. Let me speak as clearly and as plainly as I can. America is not and never will be at war with Islam. Benghazi Gate. Was it incompetence, a massive cover-up, ideology, or misplaced allegiance? Barack Obama said, I will stand with the Muslims should the political winds shift in an ugly direction. It appears they have.